Uh, I picked a different version. Uh, we're going to be looking at one verse, and this is uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians and 13.13. 13, Paul says, But now abide faith, hope, and love these three. Uh, perhaps we read it last week. And these three remain, faith, hope, and love. The most important of these is love. We just uh, talked last week about hope. And some of you said, Pastor Matthew, that was very academic, but I missed some of it. What was the point? And we, and we talked about hope. So I'm, I'm going to bring things back in more of a... a I'm not going to dumb it down because I don't believe any of you are dumb. But I will translate this more from... <laughs> all right, got a couple hands. <laughs> uh, um, I, I'm going to bring this back more to the laity as opposed to the clergy reading of things. Um, if, if we look in the realities of the Christian person, the Christian life, we see that there is faith, hope, and love. And we see that faith and hope are linked very closely together. In a certain sense, we could even say that their product is love. Faith and hope are closely linked, and we remember in chapter 11, verse 1, which we looked at uh, last week, and we saw that faith is the assurance of the things that are hoped for and the conviction of the things that are not seen. And we talked about hope being something that is coming. We believe it to be happening, but it's not happening now. I do not hope that my heart is beating. I hope that my heart will continue to beat, but I have faith that my heart is beating. Hope is something for the future. Faith is something for the present. The first half of the verse, we see this link between faith and hope. And faith is the assurance in which we base our hope. Perhaps another translation would be, faith is the substance of things that are hoped for. The underlying basis of the things that are hoped for. Or perhaps even, this is the reason for that. And we talked about having hope because most people can have hope, but not faith. Because, in fact, many people's faith is misguided. Because if faith is the substance, it is the underlying basis for the things that hope for, then this shows us that faith and hope are related, but that they are also distinct. It tells us something very important about hope. That all genuine hope is based on faith. And we could even make the statement perhaps that hope that is not based on faith is just wishful thinking. I don't have a lamp here, but if I were to rub it the right way, maybe a genie would come out. And maybe it would grant me three wishes. According to the Disney version, I can't bring anybody back from the dead. I can't make someone fall in love with me. I can't kill anyone. And I can't wish for more wishes. Now, the gospel, according to Disney, makes sense, right? No. This is a problem in today's world in that we view these things that we can... I just need these wishes. We hope to win the lottery. Not really. We wish to win the lottery. Hoping indicates that... I mean, I have faith that these are the magic numbers. No, you don't. This you wish, you, you hope. It, it's, not, it's not a matter of fact. You're not basing things. Now, I will give you this truism. You cannot win the lottery if you do not play the lottery. But in order to win the lottery, you have to have winning numbers. And what those winning numbers are, I can tell you what the last one was, but I can't guarantee that they're going to be the next one. And if that is what you place your hope in, then your life is very limited. Because everything is based on when I get this money. How many people have lived their life waiting for the come up? Many, many, many. Many, many, many. They have potential. But their hope is misguided. 
hope in the true biblical sense, is based on true faith. And when yet they are different, we see that there's conflict. As I mentioned earlier, faith is the present and hope is the future. Similarly, faith is the heart and hope is the mind. When we look at faith, and it's in the writer of Hebrews, he says faith is the substance or the underlying reality. This is something real. It's something that we have here and now in our hearts. But hope essentially looks to the future. So that's the first basic difference. Faith is when? Now, present. And hope looks to the future. Future. All right, we're on point. Each one of these is valid. They do not invalidate the other. But neither is a substitute for the other. If faith is located in the heart and hope is in the mind, then Romans 10.10 10 is very important. Because for with the heart, people believe, which results in righteousness. The heart is the place in which we believe. And that's the kind of faith that results in righteousness. Right living is through faith. Because we believe that what the Word of God says is true. We believe that what is present in front of us is able to give us the way in which we should live. Perhaps there are people with intellectual opinions and they give these intellectual assertions of doctrine. But it isn't in their hearts. And it does not change the way that they live. Because there are great authors who can write about great things. But you look at their life and it is far from it. It isn't in their heart. It does not change them in the least. Their faith produces righteousness when it is rooted in the heart, which is a changed heart because the Spirit dwells inside of it. And that's one way we know whether a person really is believing with their heart or just their mind. You see, the trouble is we tend to switch these things and we get them in the wrong place. Faith in the mind will not do what God promises. It's faith in the heart that produces the results that are promised. Now, there are different, uh, there are different Bible verses that we see these mentions of the Roman pieces of armor. And some of them are labeled. In 1 Thessalonians, we see in chapter 5, verse 8, but since we are of the day, or of the light, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So here in 1 Thessalonians, we see head, hope, faith, heart. Paul is talking here about the Christian's armor. When he talks about two specific items, this breastplate and this helmet, we can see that love, faith, hope, and love, we talked about, stems from faith. And it also relates to the salvation that comes from above. The helmet relates to this head and the mind. We understand, and the helmet is hope because this is what's coming. We have confirmation from Scripture that faith is in the realm of the heart. The breastplate. Hope is in the realm of the head of the mind. These are the two basic distinctions of faith and hope. Faith is now. Hope is the future. Faith is the heart. Hope is the mind. I've been saying this faith is now. Faith is present. Because it is a substance. Someone has once said that um, there are three F's. They're not the first word that may come to your mind. But in fact, we have fact, faith, and feeling. Fiction is not part of this. But they have to go in that order. Fact, faith, 
and feeling. And faith is based on those facts, which are the Word of God. Your faith is rooted in the, what the Bible says. And so we start with what are the facts? And then from that faith, we exhibit feelings. Feelings falls in line after faith. But if we put them in the wrong order, and we start with feelings, our feelings are very variable. Anybody know somebody who is up one and down and up and down and they're on an emotional roller coaster? Just get in a car and drive in Los Angeles and whatever mood you are in will change drastically based on the direction of the freeway you're going. You know, you can have a bad day and when you catch traffic right, it turns things around. And you can wake up on the right side of bed and feel healthy and well, and you hit traffic. And there's a cloud that just forms over you and it lingers the rest of the day. Feelings fluctuate. They're like our senses. They don't relate us to something that is permanent. So people who live by their feelings can sometimes even be considered unstable people. Up and down, in and out, in right, up right, down, up right, down right, happy all the time. We like that song from Sunday school, but we, that's, that's the faith that we're placing it in. It is rooted in the facts. The only basis for faith is fact. You have faith that your car will start because when you put gas in, when there's an engine and spark plugs and you have all these little facts in line, then your faith works. But you know that when there's no gas, you know there's no gas. I mean, it's on that anemic side of E. It, it, it's just not happening. You know there's no gas. And you still try to start that thing. That's hope. That's wishful thinking. That is not faith. Faith lives through the facts. And we as Christians have established that the Word of God is the basis of our faith. The Word of God are the facts that our faith is rooted in. The facts are already stated. They are not something that is constantly in flux. They have been established. And they are what our faith is built on. So therefore, read the Word of God so that you can develop your faith. We believe in this church that you, if you read the Word of God, you will be able to develop your own convictions. And what do I mean by that? There are some of you who read the verse in Peter, and you see the part about the women with braided hair, and you have decided to keep your hair super short, so you'll never be tempted to braid it. Okay, well, it's scriptural, but we have to also understand context. There's things about nose rings. There's things about mixed garments. Well, what about... And so all of a sudden we start reading and we start trying to understand things. Because sometimes when we read it at face value, we may get a little confused. And therefore, that's why we have the church. That's why we have been given the Holy Spirit. So as we read the Word of God, if we're confused, keep reading. The Word of God starts to reveal itself as we are faithful to the Word of God. If you are regularly reading, the things that you were confused about 7, 10, 20 years ago may be evident today, provided you have been faithful reading the Word. It's important that you have questions. When you feel that you know it all, please write a book. I'd like to know what you know and how we can better live through your wisdom. And many of us have great wisdom and insight, often through our own failures. I'm never going to do that again. How many times have you told yourself that and it still happened? <laughs> I don't know. But if faith relates us to the facts and the acts of God as we know them from God's Word, it is built on a historical basis. It's important to realize that Christianity is a historical religion. It's not just a theory. It's not just a philosophy. 
It's not something that can change back and forth, but it's a religion that is based on events. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is an event, not a theory. And it happened in human history. The faith relates to those events. It relates to the facts and the acts of God. If we go back to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2, Jesus is called two things, the author and the perfecter of our faith. As the author, Jesus had laid the basis of our faith. And as the perfecter, he's the one who is going to complete and finish it where he began. Later in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, Jesus is called the apostle, the high priest of our confession. That's the same truth in another way. An apostle, he's the one who came from God and did what was needed to be done to give us the basis of faith. But as our high priest, he is the one who goes, has gone back to God, and he is in God's presence. He now represents us and thus will complete the work that he began as our apostle through the hope we have in Jesus Christ. So faith relates us to Jesus in the capacity of author, apostle, the one who began our faith and the one who laid the foundation as well as the one who did what was needed to be done to provide salvation. Hope relates to Jesus as the perfecter of our faith and as our high priest, the one who, by his prayer and intercessory ministry in heaven, will now complete in us that which he began by his apostolic work on our behalf here on earth. Bottom line, faith is based on what Jesus has done. Hope looks forward to what Jesus will do. Jesus died and rose again. Done. Jesus is coming again. Do. I want to emphasize, uh, in no means am I hamstringing last week. In no, way, in no way am I belittling hope. I'm just distinguishing it again from faith in a different manner. Hope is very important to the Christian life. It is the helmet of the mind. It is what protects our minds from depression, anxiety, fear, and unbelief. Hope is a solid scriptural basis. Otherwise, it's just wishful thinking, as I brought up earlier. And there's really one sufficient scriptural base for hope, and that's Romans 8.28. We know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love Him, to those who are called according to His purpose. Provided we meet those conditions, that we love God, and that we are walking in His calling and His purpose of our lives, then we know that everything that happens, God causes to work together for the good of those who love Him. Amen. So there is never any basis for pessimism. But always this is the basis of our hope. It's the faith in God's goodness. And when we forget that we are walking in the will of God, when bad things happen, we say, how can this work for your goodness, O God? I don't get it. When we fall into depression, moodiness, Morning sickness. I don't know. Morning sickness is sometimes a pregnant thing, but some people are just sick in the morning. You realize that? Afternoon and evening, they're they're good. But in the morning, oh worst person ever, right? Anybody like that before their coffee? Just don't bother me. I don't drink coffee, so I guess just don't bother me in life. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. But our feelings that go up and down and up and down. This is the hope in the mind that helps protect us. Hope and faith each have a function. Faith is in the heart, it's the breastplate. Hope is in the mind, it's the helmet. And as we keep these things in mind, as we focus on how we can live out faith and live out hope, we will see next week that love is the product or the logical conclusion. How do I love my neighbor who is unlovable? How can people love me because I am unlovable? 
These are things that people wrestle with on a regular basis in relation to love, and we'll look at that. But I want you to be encouraged, and I want you to be confident that when you live through faith in the facts of the Word of God, then faith is the natural product, and you will be able to live it out and you will be able to experience it in reality. And that is my encouragement to you. That is my promise to you through evidence in the scripture. And it starts with our belief that the scripture is the word of God. I often tell people the hardest thing about the Bible is Genesis 1.1. If you cannot believe that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, you are limiting your faith. You are limiting what you can accept as the truth because for you, I feel that God's not big enough to handle that. And if God can't create the heavens and the earth, then God can't help me with my hangnail. God can't help me with my bank account. And God can't do this because He's not big enough to handle the other stuff. We limit ourselves. Faith is believing the Word of God. Treasuring it in our hearts. And then living it out. Heavenly Father, we thank You for our time together and we thank You for Your Word. I would like to thank You for the offerings that we will receive. I want to ask that You bless both the gift and the giver. I ask, O oh God, that you would give us your peace and that you would encourage us this week in our faith as we read through your word. May we receive your goodness. May we know that you are God. And we ask, Lord, that this church would continue to be able to minister to the community, that this church would continue to be able to reach out to lives who need saving. May the offerings and tithes that come before us today be used for that purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.